Hello friends, I'm your host Dave Layton and welcome to the podcast Walking with Our Master, an outreach of the Prattville Church of Christ designed to inform, encourage, and teach as we daily walk with our Master. Today I'm joined by Jeremy and Melanie Cleveland. I've always enjoyed knowing and interacting with this wonderful family. Today we're going to learn a little bit more about them. Well, hello Jeremy and Melanie. Hi Dave. How you doing? I'm doing good. And I know y'all are tired. You're, you're coming in and this is actually evening time. You've been at work all day. and So thank you. Really, thank you for your time. We'll try to make this as painless as possible so Jeremy can go get his nap. <laughs> We're glad thank to you. be here. Glad to be here. Yeah. Well, uh, again, you know, this is, this is about our family. The Prattville Church, which is a family, and we want to get to know each other and, and all of that. Well, let's talk about yourselves just a little bit. Melanie, we'll start with you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Great. Okay. I'm from a little town called Orange Park, Florida. Okay. Uh, actually, Never heard of it. Where, where is it? Close? Near Jacksonville. Okay. If anybody that's been in the Navy, there's a Naval Air Station near Orange okay. Park. Okay. Uh, grew up there most of my life and came off to school at Auburn University. Uh-huh. I would have guessed that. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I won't tell you what year. That'll tell my age. But, <laughs> That's okay. Uh, no, we, I went to school at Auburn University. Actually, I grew up Catholic. Okay. And while I was We in, share that. I did, too. Yes. And, uh -huh. and while I was in school at Auburn, uh, I met some girls and moved into a condo with some girls from the Auburn Christian Student Center and the Auburn Church of Christ. Okay. So, uh, with a lot of patience and study, they studied with me, and I was baptized, became a Christian while I was mm -hmm. in school at Auburn uh, in 1991. I will tell my okay, age. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> okay. And actually met Jeremy while I was there. We met at church at the Auburn Church of Christ. Yeah. And uh, the rest is history. So y'all were college sweethearts? Yes. Okay. <laughs> that's that's great. Uh, yeah, I, I talk about in uh, other podcasts and when I teach that um, our Lord always brings the seeker and the learn or the teacher together. And in your case, that happened in a, in a kind of a unique way, but he always makes that happen. That's great. I love that yep. story. That, that's wonderful. So you met Jeremy at Faulkner? No, at Auburn. I at mean, Auburn. yeah. Auburn, excuse yeah. me. So, uh, you know, grew up in uh, North Alabama, Northeast Alabama, up in uh, around Gadsden, small town outside of Gadsden called Atala. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So, moved to Auburn in the early 90s, went to school there. I uh, was going to church at the Christian Student Center, I mean, at Auburn Church Christ, and I, I participated in the Christian Student Center. Yeah. That's where we met Mally. Uh, I really find it neat that, you know, the coming to her belief in Jesus and, and her being baptized, obeying the gospel before we met was, was really good. And the fact that she was a young and new Christian when we met, that was really good as well. I grew up in the church, been going ever since yeah. I guess I could yeah. uh, be carried in the doors. And um, it, I was able to bring a lot of biblical knowledge, I guess, or, or factual knowledge more so than practical knowledge. Okay, you know? sure. And she was able to bring a lot of uh, zeal and and more of excitement, you know, to that to right. the word. Yeah. And so we she was going through the we discovery phase. Yeah. yeah. So we complimented each other really well at that time, <clears throat> and and uh, kind of got me out of the mundane day to day walk, and yeah. and got more into the discovery of going back to some of the things we learned early on. I'm a teacher at Prattville High School. Uh huh. More uh, than a teacher, you're. I'm also the head uh, head athletic trainer. Uh huh. Um, so I do all the sports medicine for every sport at Prattville High School. All, all the sports medicine for every sport? Wow. Yeah, I do have an assistant, but yeah, it's, yeah. it's the two of us. Yeah. And, and you recent the school recently started, you were telling me, a uh, girls' um, flag football. Flag football team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have, right now, currently we have three active sports going on. I guess one that's on the side a little bit with swimming. Swimming doesn't do anything until they get to the championship. Uh, we'll have two or three going on in the wintertime, and in the springtime it's just a free-for-all. There's so many sports going yeah. on in the spring. Wow. Uh, it's hard to keep up with. 
so many sports it's hard to work in some classes. But, <laughs> exactly. And you were telling me that today you had six classes. Six classes. So no yeah. wonder you wore out. Yes. <laughs> wow. Yes. <laughs> yeah. okay. It's only two preps. Yeah. So it was um, okay. kind of repeating the same thing over and over yes. today. Yes. I, I remember uh, as a teacher, uh, we might get in a new material or something, and I'd have to rewrite my lesson plans. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. All That's right. Rough. All right, I had a question. Here we go. Um, I always like to ask folks, by the way, how long y'all been married? 28 years. 28, 28 years. Plus. Great, great. I remember what it was I was going to mention now. Um, Lynn and I were kind of the opposite. I was the new Christian. Uh, I had just obeyed the gospel not long before. Uh, I attended Freed Hardeman University. Of course, Lynn grew up as a preacher's kid, grew up in the church. And and um, so, yeah, I understand what you're talking about, a lot of uh, sense of discovery and um, somewhat a feeling of uh, intimidation at times. Uh, I mean, Freed Hardeman University is a Christian campus. Um, I'm, I'm surrounded by members of the church and the professors and all of that. It was great, but wow, right. <laughs> a lot of learning to do. Okay, uh, so y'all have been married 28 years. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, wonderful. I love finding out uh, from couples how long they've been married, especially the elderly ones when they say, oh, 65, 70 <laughs> years. And now Lynn and I are getting ready to have our 50th anniversary. Congratulations. In, thank you, in uh, June. And I remember as young married people thinking about somebody being married 50 years, thinking, man, that's all. Well, it's not that long in the future. <laughs> it really is. Here it is. Got there quick. Now, you guys have three daughters. Mm -hmm. Correct. And, and uh, the youngest one, Shanna, following in your footsteps, is attending at uh, Auburn. Did the other two go to Auburn? No. They're at Faulkner University. Faulkner. Okay. Ashley uh, has graduated from Faulkner in accounting. Okay. And Abigail is pursuing occupational therapy. She wants okay. to get her doctorate from Faulkner Great. University. Yeah. Great. So she'll be in school a while longer, but that's yeah. good. That's good. Yeah. I love, that's another thing. I love young people who say, I, I, I have an, a goal in mind. I have a pathway I'm moving towards. And uh, Shanna, now, again, chemical engineer. Correct. Chemical mm -hmm. engineer. What possessed her to, to go that route? She it's a great, great chemistry. career. She career loves chemistry. chemistry. Great career field. <laughs> Yeah. She had a, uh, in high school, her soccer coach was her chemistry teacher. Okay. And she took her class in chemistry, and then she took AP chemistry. Uh, she knew that she wanted to do something with engineering because she'd already done some engineering classes down at okay. the uh, Otago County Technical Center. Okay. And then, okay. Uh, like I said, she had one pathway in mind after she had done that. But then after having the chemistry class, yeah, that just, she found her passion. She found a love for it. Well, love not only that, but she went and to Jamaica on the mission trip. Yes. And More than before once, yeah. she went to Jamaica, her major was actually mechanical engineering. She'd looked at aerospace and switched to mechanical because it was a little more broad field. Okay. And after being in Jamaica where there were rolling power outages, she would... Uh, she and the team would go to the schools, the public schools in Jamaica, and during the day, the power would cut off. And so they didn't have air conditioning, but their fans would stop and the lights would go out. Yeah. And all the kids, she said, didn't react. It was not a big deal to them. Okay. But for the team, yeah. for the Americans, that was a big <laughs> deal that, hey, there's no power. Yeah. And so when she came back, she changed her major from mechanical engineering to chemical with a minor in nuclear power generation okay and she said that was because she wanted to a lot bring of, a lot of easy reading and <laughs> right yeah well her her reasoning was she wanted to bring more sustainable and affordable power to islands like jamaica Developing where they wouldn't countries. have these rolling power outages so it, the the mission work in Jamaica ignited a passion for her career. Okay. Yeah. We have enjoyed watching your daughters grow. Uh, as as a father of four daughters, uh, I, w I would look at your daughters growing and just smile, you yeah. know, because I see that developing, they, maturing, becoming wonderful young ladies. Uh, which one is doing physical therapy? Uh, Abigail's doing occupational therapy. Occupational therapy. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
uh, I, I was thinking physical therapy, and I'm thinking, she doesn't strike me as a drill sergeant. <laughs> it's funny you mentioned that. It's, it really is because when she first went to Faulkner, she was looking at the physician assistance program that they have. Okay. Right. Yeah. And then uh, one of the programs at Faulkner, one of the things they do for those that are coming in in those areas, they have them take a class where they get exposed to their other health sciences. Yes. Yes. And so she goes and into those classes and she learns a little bit more about each one of them. And she comes back and she tells her mom, she says, uh, the, uh, I think I want to change to occupational therapy. Better to discover it now than be halfway through her exactly. college program. <laughs> well, the funny thing is, you know, Melanie is not as aware of some of the different intricacies of the different medical fields as I am. Yeah. And she comes to me with some current concerns thinking, uh, is this a good thing for her? Is this a good decision? Is this good for her future? And I'm thinking, I know Abigail's personality, and I think it'd be great. Yeah. And I'm telling this her, this, feel. this will be a great field for her. With her, uh, of all of our three daughters, she's the most compassionate okay uh wanting to reach out and kind of put a hand out and help others along and that kind of thing and and i think that she could do that in any medical field but i think occupational therapy yeah. will be one that she really will strive i mean well do absolutely well. what what strikes me the three fields are technical fields uh there'll always be opportunities but there's a lot of crossover that they can go ahead and get the degree in that and then there's other related fields and mm -hmm. things they can mm -hmm. bring out. Right. So those are all really good decisions. Again, you know, your your daughters are doing great. What Thank a wonderful you. future they have for them. Okay. So you guys have been a part of the, well, how long have you been a part of the Prattville family? I moved here in 2007 because of uh, going to work for Prattville High School. Uh -huh. um, we, you know, it was the time of uh, life that that was, that was the housing downturn and it took us a okay. long time to sell our house in Albertville. Yeah. So Melanie didn't move down and the girls didn't move down until 2008. So about eight months later. Uh, so we've been here since 16 okay. years all in all. Yes. Yeah. So. Now Melanie, you work in a uh, state of Alabama position. I what? do. I'm a communications director for the Alabama Medicaid agency. Okay. And Prior to that, I worked for Department of Finance for the finance director for the state of Alabama. Oh, well, that's where one of your daughters had a little bit of a slant toward accounting, perhaps. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> so she actually works there now for the comptroller's oh, okay. office with Good. the Department of Finance. Okay. And uh, she's enjoying her time there and mm -hmm. getting some good experience. But yeah, prior to that, I worked with the Chamber of Commerce here in town for Prattville. And, uh, that was a fun job, but you know, working for the state had a little bit better hours and benefits. So, yeah, uh, yeah. but Medicaid has probably been my biggest challenge, for sure. Uh, communication with everyone from providers in the state to uh, Medicaid recipients. So it, okay. it is a big challenge. For yeah, me. you've got to know both sides of whatever the perspective is there. What what mm -hmm. all the rules and regulations, and then from the uh, patient or not the patient i guess or or customer side of it you need mm -hmm. to know how to communicate wow challenging okay yeah. so y'all been here uh since 2007 mm -hmm. wow time flies it goes very fast yeah now jeremy uh let me let me transition here a little bit you guys uh are active in the congregation very much mm -hmm. uh, what what you're one of our deacons correct yes. and and tell a little bit about your area of work there well i'm in congregational care uh, the biggest part of it is, well, I think, let me back up a second. I think the elders looked at the situation at that time and thought, we've got this group and they're yep. really good and they're doing this work. And we got this yep. group over here and it's really yep. going well and they got that work. And, and there were so many different groups doing different good works in different ways that they wanted to have someone that uh, kind of would bring things together. Yeah. Good. Uh, kind of, kind of brings more cohesion there, and and most of that's through fellowships. Yeah, you know, I've heard I've heard positions similar to that referred to as um, congregational involvement. Mm -hmm. So it's not you're getting people involved, but you're also seeing yeah. how they can support one another as opposed to double dipping or conflicting or whatever. Okay, exactly. great. Okay, so we've been doing that for I don't remember when when that oh, started. So it's been so long ago, but, uh, years. Yeah. We've got a, quite a system, I guess, when it comes to the fellowships and how those things work and mm -hmm. operate. Um, well, we've had a lot of very uh, 
generous people to step in and help anytime we've asked. Yeah. That's been a big yeah. blessing for us. Yeah, and it does help. And that enables Jeremy to do the role that he has here mm -hmm. just from all the help and the people that step in and say, hey, what you need me to do or what can I bring? Yeah. So. I, I, I appreciate that about our congregation mm -hmm. on so many levels, so many different ministry areas, <laughs> things people are doing, and we're surprised when we find out about them and, and uh, somebody will see a need and they'll step into it. So it really does make a difference. <laughs> okay. Um, Melanie, what kind of activities do you find yourself involved with here? Okay, well, other than helping Jeremy with staying organized for yeah. all these fellowships that we do. Well, and see, oh. and, and see that's something we don't fully appreciate. <laughs> well, um, I was fixing to, to comment on that in a minute. Okay, good. Yeah. I'll, I'll, let you, I'll let you do that. Well, where, where that started, though, was back after I became a Christian and graduated, mm -hmm. I, my degree was in communication. So, you know, that's kind of a catch-all field. You right. can do a lot of different things with communication. Yes, that's another one of those fields that you can go all different directions. So, with. one of my first jobs I had after college was to work for the Auburn Christian Student Center. It kind of came full circle. Okay. I was their activities coordinator. So, I was on staff to literally plan all their retreats, all their big theme parties and functions that the students were involved in. So what, what a great would, assistant uh, for you. <laughs> that's what I was thinking. I didn't know that's where she was going, but that's exactly yeah. what I was thinking in my mind. But that experience that I gained doing that job has helped me in the ministry everywhere else that we've ever moved mm -hmm. to. So it's, it's, I think, been a benefit. I feel more confident about helping or planning the events because of that job. But it's also helped me in my career going forward as well. Uh, you learn real quick how to treat your volunteers and how oh, yeah. to yeah. how to ask nicely. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but I've also helped with youth events. Jason and Cassie are awesome. They take a lot of things on and mm -hmm. do a lot for the youth. But as a parent that had children in the as part of the youth group, I think it's important that parents step up and get involved. So as long as we had kids involved with the youth group, we were always yep. there to assist. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, we could, but I also help now with um, teaching some of the children's Bible classes. Mm -hmm. So, and that's a lot of fun. I love the older group, the fifth and sixth graders, okay. because they can think and they can respond. Yeah. You know, you can get them to really uh, develop their faith yeah. as you go along. And that's exciting. Uh, and, and Jeremy, you're helping out teach in our oh, young, so I do. young uh, adult. Uh, class that I teach, uh, the vision that I had for it to begin with is more of a multi -direct, uh, generational, multi generational class. I really think we can uh, really learn from one another at different stages. And kind of going back to what I said about earlier on when uh, Mount and I were dating and, and you had a young Christian that was developing her faith and you had someone who had been a little bit more. Uh, walking those lines for longer, we we fed off of each other, and I think that as a class, the class is actually called Prattville Home Builders. Okay. If you if you want to give it a name, and yeah, because, I say it's Prattville Home Builders, and you're in the 38 room. Exactly. Yeah, we had to learn some new words here. <laughs> so, and, and the reason why that is is because you know whether you're a newlywed family just starting out. Whether you're trying to, you know, you're having kids and you got those young ages, uh, and you're trying to figure out how to discipline and how to encourage and how to um, guide them along their way, and then you get people who have kids that are in their teenage years, uh, walking through those issues that come up and, and starting college, and then you have empty nesters. Yeah. yeah. As we've just moved into that world. Yeah. Uh, with Shanna going off to Auburn. And then you have those that have grandkids. I, the reason I want it to be multi-generational, and I really give you, thank you for this opportunity to kind of explain that because people don't really understand what I'm yeah. trying to go for. Yeah. The reason why I think it's great having multi-generational is we're all, we all have homes, and those homes are constantly needing to be maintenanced and remodeled and, and, and worked with, whether you're in the earlier stages or in those later stages, and we can all learn from each other. And it's a class that I want to have a lot of discussion in and have a lot of interaction in, not so much lecture in, Yeah. but have a lot of back and forth uh, conversation in so that we can learn from each other. Yeah, explore. 
it, it, there's probably some mentoring going on in there that uh, people don't necessarily realize or not in a formal way is what mm -hmm. I mean by mm -hmm. that. So uh, some modeling that's going on. Exactly. I do yeah. believe highly in modeling. Well, I'm, I'm thrilled, absolutely thrilled with our young adult group. Uh, I say group. I mean, they're, they're just a large swath of our congregation. They have been growing for the last several years and they're growing spiritually as well. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just thrilled with them. I, I talk about it all the time. You know, something that strikes me from both of you, and I, I, I absolutely mean this as a compliment. I appreciate very much how both of you are bringing all of the education and experience and talent that you have out there in your jobs and your secular life type thing, you're bringing that in as you serve the Lord and serve our congregation. And that, yeah, that's what we do. Mm -hmm. You know, our, our Lord gives us those talents and then we put them to use for him. And, and that's great. Okay. Well, I always like to finish up with a question about what you think makes the Prattville Church, what makes our family unique. I guess I can go ahead and start with that. Okay. Uh, All right. Well, and I've heard this from a lot of others in the congregation, talking about how friendly we are to one another, how encouraging we are to one another, and and that's that's the unique thing. Um, anytime we have moved, when we moved away from Auburn, we moved uh, to Gunnersville or Albertville and Gunnersville area. Uh, first thing that is a married couple that we wanted to do was to. I mean, it was very important to find our home congregation. We sure. even started researching before we left Auburn. Uh huh and visited around, asked questions. When we left Gunnersville and came to Prattville, we even came in on a day that, that during the week, no one was here except for the ministers. And, and we wanted to go and enter, kind of like a interview, talk to Brian and talk to whoever else, the secretary, whoever was here that we could talk to to find out what was going on. And then the first time, time we came to the congregation during worship service, it was, uh, just an outgoing outpouring of of interest in us and wanting to know who we are and where we're coming from and mm -hmm. those kind of things and just wanting to get involved with our lives. Uh, then we met the Adairs. Met who? <laughs> the Adairs. Uh, Doris and, and Billy Adair. You know, that's funny because they were some of the first folks that I met when yeah. I came here. Yeah. yeah, I complimented them on that the other day when I chatted with them. Yeah. Well, the, the neat thing is, is that we did the other one was Vicki McCullough, but... Well, she, we walked, we went around with her trying to find a place. But um, talking with Doris, we found out that, were, that their younger son had gone to Auburn about the same time that we yep. had. Well, when she found out that we was there at the same time she was, she was inviting me home to have <laughs> your family now. And and I do call her my prattful mother or my prattful mom uh, because they have been such a big important encouragement yeah. in our lives and that kind of thing. So the people, the people are so unique and it's foundational. Yeah, very foundational. It's the lessons that were you're taught are sound. Mm -hmm. biblically sound and there are so many people it's not just one person that gets up and is a preacher and and he's also in all these uh, there's so many people that are involved yeah. that's what makes it unique yeah. and it's a large congregation and even through some of these tough times uh, every congregation goes up and down but even through some of the tough times through COVID in this this last few years it has stayed yeah. pretty strong yeah, we're, we're, we're staying involved with one another. Exactly. Yeah. So I think a lot of what Jeremy's just talked about is a reflection of our leadership. Yes. Our elders, Absolutely. our deacons, our ministers. I think each of them working well together. We all have a common goal, and they, each of the leaders, have a common goal of caring about each other, showing the love of Christ, and bringing others to Christ. And it's evident that the sincerity and and the willingness to work hard and do whatever it takes to bring people to Christ mm -hmm. and to show His love. Not evangelism, if you don't mind, I, I'd like to add to it. When, when I talked about interviewing, and yeah, one of the first things that Brent let us know was how many people had been brought to Christ, how many people had been baptized that particular year that we got here, and the unique side of that. I think going along was, you know, you expect children coming of age to be baptized. 
Okay. But the numbers that he gave us was the people from the community. Right. Exactly. That had been baptized mm -hmm. through the different efforts of the church. And not just because Brent went out and did a Bible class, yeah. but because our members were mm -hmm. out there involved in evangelism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I also appreciate every congregation you go to has opportunities to serve. Mm -hmm. But this congregation is unique in encouraging you to serve. Yeah. I've over the years experienced um, different ladies of the congregation who have literally taken me by the hand and say, come serve with me. Yeah. Or, you know, if you're not sure, if you're not comfortable with this, yeah. come do it alongside me All and right. let's do this together. Yeah. And not necessarily not taking no for an answer, but, you know, it was strong encouragement. Not taking no as their first answer. <laughs> right. And so, I mean, there's other congregations I've been a part of that you might be asked to serve, but if you don't say yes right away, they may not come back to you. But yeah. this congregation's unique that you have some really strong Christian ladies who have yeah. taken me by the hand oh, and yeah. helped me. You yeah. know, one person, uh, I hate to call one person out, but one person I'd like to mention is Val Brown, oh, especially yeah. Yeah. with Lads to Leaders. Yeah. Uh, if you have a young lady in this congregation that's of age to do speech for Lads to Leaders, you can't tell Val Brown no. <laughs> 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 She's just really... Yeah talented at bringing these young ladies from our church in and teaching them how to put a speech yeah. together and giving them confidence to get up and speak. Yeah. You know, so. uh, you, you mentioned leadership, uh, our formal leadership, but there's so many other folks that are taking leading roles. You mentioned Val. Uh, there's just so many. Uh, and and it's, it's not from a, I've got to be in charge of something perspective of, I'm just going to I see a need. I'm gonna. I'm gonna run with it, and yeah. and so that that just really adds to it. Okay, great. Wow. Mm -hmm. Anything else y'all want to add? Okay. okay, I'm pretty good. Okay, great. Well, listen. Thank you for being a part of the podcast. Thank you for being such wonderful members of our Prattville family, and uh, all that you do in that capacity. It's it's a joy to serve with you. Well, friends, I'm your host, Dave Layton, and thank you for joining us in this podcast. I hope you will continue to do so. If you wish to share with me something from your walk with our master, or you want to learn more, please email me at walkingwithourmaster at gmail.com. That's walkingwithourmaster at gmail.com. I invite you to follow our podcast and share it with others as together we walk with our master. And until next time, remember, we give all glory to God the Father. Amen.